It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere I go. So I can give Michael Bublé a run for his money, don't you think? Ah, I tell you what, I'll rather stick to my day job. It's enough that that song is now going to play in your mind and haunt you for the rest of the day. And in fact, over the next couple of days, you're probably going to hear so much more of it as we are now just a week away from the start of the festive period and the countdown to the big Christmas celebration has begun. But before we get to all of that, there is a small matter of the Cape Guineas that will be run here at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth on Saturday. Hello again, racing fans. Welcome to Commentator Smith's Comments, where I, of course, get to share some reviews, previews, and industry-related news. And this week, it's all about the much-anticipated clash of the country's leading three-year-olds, the Hollywood Bed Cape Guineas, a race that is steeped in history and tradition, but more about that in more detail later. All of these features will be run slap bang in the middle of a long weekend. Schools have closed and a lot of people normally take time out at this time of the year. And let's face it, festive season means you need to have extra cash. And there's only one way to do it. Get involved on Saturday because Tab4 Racing is offering a Cape Guineas Day carryover bonanza. There is a 1 million rand big six carryover and they're estimating that that pool will get up to 6 million rand. I think we could probably surpass that. The first leg runs at 13.20. Now, normally, you also get an opportunity of two chances to win the tab jackpot. But this coming Saturday, you'll have three. The first jackpot gets underway with the very first race at 11.30. Leg one of the second jackpot will be race five at 13.55. And race eight will be the first leg of the third jackpot, which runs at 15.40. And that's not all. There's also a 250,000 rand quartet carry forward to the Hollywood Bets Cape Guineas. It's race eight on the card. It runs at 15.40, and the likely pool is estimated to get up to a million rand. So a bumper day is racing. There's lots of betting opportunities. No doubt, the tab queues will be long. So I'd suggest top up that tab for racing account and get those bets on timelessly to avoid disappointment. Roads lead to Hollywood Bets Kittleworth on Saturday, and it's been certainly one of the most talked about race meetings in many a year. Three feature races and two supporting two-year-old races, which are part of the extended juvenile series of races across the summer, and all of this is part of an 11 race. Yes, you heard right, an 11 race program that is scheduled to take place at Hollywood Bets Kittleworth. And uh, with racing getting underway rather early at 11.30, it means you'll have to be here bright and early so that you can soak up the atmosphere and be part of all the action. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of the big grade one meeting this coming Saturday, it'll be remiss of me not to throw back to last Sunday when we had the running of the grade two Cape Merchants, which was certainly won in comfortable fashion by Gimme a Prince beating 19 rivals in the dash down the Kenilworth Strait. In fact, Gimme a Prince was the one horse that really attracted the betting support prior to the off. He shortened from six to one into seven to two, and he didn't let his supporters down. He was well ridden, and he certainly dominated the finish, pulling clear to win by two lengths. It was Wee Jammin who came out of the pack next best to the rest to run into second, and then the ultra consistent Bereave was also incidentally second in this race last year behind Vikram who flew up on the outside running rail to run into third, while Jem King returning from a layoff was the surprise package back in fourth. It was also a good day at the office for log leading jockey Keegan DeMello. He rode a winner for Kaya Stables on the day. And the next stop for all these speech merchants will of course be the Cape Flying Championship, which is run on the last Saturday of January, and then onto the Diadem, which is sponsored by Kaya Stables, and that runs on the last Saturday of Feb. But right now, let's focus our attention on everything purple. And in fact, the invitation said, come dressed colorful. Hollywood Bets are the headline sponsors of the big Cape Guineas meeting this coming Saturday. Now, the race itself, if one looks back over the years, has been the birthplace of not only future champions, but future stallions as well. In fact, if one looks at the list, the likes of Horse Chestnut, Jetmaster, Variety Club, Captain L, JPEG, Cape Town Noir, but to mention a few, they all left their mark 
in the history books of South African racing, and it certainly is an illustrious role of honor. This year, a quality field of 15 will be lining up at the 1600 meter mark at 15.40 for the running of the 2022 renewal of the Hollywood Bets Cape Guineas. Heading up the lineup is, of course, the unbeaten talking horse at the moment, none other than Charles Dickens. In fact, he is odds on favorite, deep in the red, and it doesn't look like the bookies are wanting to take any chances with him. It's also good to see a bit of North versus South rivalry in this race because there's a trio of Gauteng visitors coming to take on the locals. Mike DeCock is bringing Dingon's winner Union Square and stablemate Shoemaker and Grant Maroon is bringing the Graham Beck Stakes winner Anfield's Rocket to come and contest this year's Hollywood Betscape Guineas. Many are saying it's a matter of how far banker Charles Dickens in all exotics. Yes, they could very well be right. I was certainly most impressed with his last victory. It was truly spectacular, and I'm on record as having said that I can't remember when last I've called, yet alone seen a scintillating performance by a three-year-old of that caliber while giving weight and disposing of some hard-knocking individuals. It really was a remarkable performance. However, this will be his toughest task to date because he does bump grade one winner, Cousin Casey. His last season's Equus champion two-year-old and it's the very first time that Charles Dickens will also be going over 1,600 meters. As a form studier, for me, there's precious little on paper between these two. In fact, one can safely say that races are not run on paper, they're run on grass. But having said that, there are two form lines and two line horses that proves this theory. Now, the two form lines are the Grade 3K Classic and the Grade 2 Punters Cup, and the two line horses are at my command and Port Louis. Now in the Grey 3 Cape Classic over 1400, Charles Dickens beat at my command by three lengths and Port Louis by 3.05 lengths. In the Grey 2 Punters Cup, Cousin Casey beat at my command by one length and Port Louis by 2.80 lengths. Now herein lies the twist in the tale. Charles Dickens beat them at level weights in the Cape Classic, while Cousin Casey gave them two kilos in the Punters Cup. Do the maths, that makes them inseparable on paper. Hence the reason I'm saying you have to be at Kenilworth to be here to witness all the action with your very own eyes because it's going to be a vintage renewal of this grade one classic. I'm certainly not going to be rushing out to take five to ten about Charles Dickens with the sponsors. To me the value lies with one of the line horses I mentioned at my command because last time out he was drawn 13, he dropped right out, he was absolutely flying, and he finished second behind Cousin Casey. This time round, he jumps from the plumb draw of pole position. He will enjoy the run of the race. And at 14 to 10, a place first four, and five to two, a place first three. To me, that represents great value and a lovely place bet if you're looking to get on in the Cape Guineas. One thing's for sure, we're in for a thriller. Moving on to race nine, which is the Richmond Highlands Peninsula Handicap Grade 2 over 1800 meters. And here we have a full field of 16. To close off the pick six, and exotic players will be saying, we'll have to put in as many as the budget allowed. We're not going to take any chances as this race does have a very wide open look about it. We have the likes of three, Imel Yenzi Yakadaduma, who's going for a hat trick. There's number four, Hans Solo, who won the listed Algoa Cup at his last start. That form line incidentally has been franked. Han Solo comes in with a very handy weight of 54 kilograms and one thing you can be assured of uh, as far as Han Solo is concerned you will always get a good run for your money and then there's number six Airways Law he makes his seasonal debut he was last seen in action when running sixth in the Hollywood Bets Durban July and it will be interesting to see how he goes in this lineup but there are a number of horses that are meeting each other again and they're renewing rivalry and that to me could just be the key to the outcome of this race. In fact, the likes of One Cat Daddy, Five Warrior, Seven Chalima, Ten Somerset Morm, and Sixteen Sylvanos Timer all meet again. Now that race when they last met was won by number 16 Sylvanos Timer. And for that victory, he's picked up a five point increase in the rating. Number Five Warrior was third. He's now two and a half kilos better off at the weights. So that brings him much closer to the action. 
But on, on that run, I'm going to be siding with number 10, Somerset Moore, who is a full brother to Charles Dickens, is ideally course and distance suited, he's had four runs for a win, two seconds and a third, he's a model of consistency, he's also a kilo and a half better off at the weights with Silvano timer for a three parts of a leg beating and to me, that's more than enough for him to turn the tables. So he's going to be my first choice and wouldn't it be special to see both brothers win on the same afternoon at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth. Then race 10 is the Hollywood Bets Victor Stakes Grade 3 of 1800 meters. Now it might be small in numbers, but there's certainly lots of depth in terms of quality. We've got the likes of last season's Triple Tiara winner, number one, Rain in Holland. Last season's Will Lavington Stakes winner, number three, Silver Darling. Last season's Grohl Bracelet winner, number four, Marina. And last season's Phillies Guineas winner, number five, Sean Zanay all taking on each other. There's just seven of them, which will be lining up to face the starter. And if one sort of look at the form line more closely, there is one form line that I've singled out, and that's the non-black type Summer Bowl, which was won by Make It Snappy, who subsequently went on to win the grade one Cape Phillies Guineas. Now all of Marina, Sean Zanay, Silver Darling, they all win new rivalry. Marina was second in that race, Sean Zanay third, and Silver Darling fifth. Having said that, to me, Marina stands out because she's a course and distance specialist. From six runs, she's had three wins and two thirds. She will strip much fitter and she's a half a kilogram better off at the weights with both Sean Zanay and Silver Darling. And to me, she rates the one to beat in the Hollywood Bets Victor Stakes. All in all, we can look forward to an absolute thrilling day's racing here at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth with no less than 11 races on the card. Make sure you get down early so that you can soak up the atmosphere. There's lots to look forward to. In fact, the big anticipated clash of the three-year-olds is the big draw card to the meeting. We've also got the Corp Carps of Clopsa will be coming to give us a first mark of what we can expect on Tweedy Nivy Yard here in Cape Town. There will be carryovers, lots of betting opportunities. Come dress colorful. I will be here. I will be in the hot seat intermittently during the course of the day. And I look forward to seeing you at the races.